In this lesson, we're going to learn how to add breakaway objects. Now, a breakaway object would be something like our rear view mirror or our side mirrors that will detach from the main body and then fall to the ground and continue rolling or whatever it is that they're going to do. So what I'm hoping for here is that we'll have a setup that the mirrors will roll with the truck, but at some point they're going to crush against the ground and break away. Okay, so let's get started here. So the first thing I'll do is select my first mirror here, and we're going to make that an end cloth object. And we might as well do the other one at the same time. Okay, and then I'm going to add my metal preset, and we'll add that to both side mirrors. And we do want to make just a few changes here. Uh, the first thing is that we're going to change our collision layer to 1. Now the reason for this is that my other objects have already been simulated. So I don't want the mirror to affect what they're going to do. So for instance, the body should not have any influence from the side mirror. So by moving this to a higher collision layer, we avoid that, even though the body has already been cached. Okay, we still want to do that. Okay, next I'm going to take that self-collide with scale and let's reduce that down to a value of 1. And we'll keep going down here and let's get rid of our input drag and input attract. We're not going to need those. And I'm going to add some rigidity which will help maintain the surface integrity, but it's also going to give it the ability to kind of bounce against the ground a bit and not just fall into a puddle. Okay, and let's see, let's make sure gravity is active. So I'm just going to uncheck that. We will want gravity to play uh, a big role here. Okay, and that should do it. Now, I've already saved that out as a preset, so I will add that to my other side. Okay, now I'm going to take this and add a transform constraint. Okay, and let's make sure that that's on so we can see it. There we go. So our transform constraint is going to keep it fixed right where this locator is. Well, I need to move that locator. Now, I can take the locator and just make it a child of our original locator here, which was part of our roll cage. And that's the same guy that has all of our animation. But the problem with doing that is it will not pick up any deformation from the body here, or at least it won't do it accurately. So what I want is for this transform constraint to actually sit right here and be influenced by the polygon that it is sitting on from the body. So I want the, bod the uh, polygon body or a face from the body to be influencing my transform constraint. Okay? Now we can do this, however, we need to utilize a UV set because what we're going to do is place this transform constraint using a point to surface constraint, okay, or a point on poly constraint. But if we take a look here, our UVs are not so pretty, okay, they're pretty much a wreck, okay, that's okay. What we can do here is still modify this, and I'm going to bring up my hypergraph, and so we can take a look here. Okay, and what we need to do, let's make sure our shape nodes are on, there we go. What we need to do, what, what we need to make sure that happens here, is that we're only affecting my input mesh, okay, not the output mesh that actually has all the cloth deformation on it, okay. So we're kind of doing this prior, uh, but we're not going to scrap all of the end cloth and all of the uh, parameters that have already set 
on the body. Okay, so I'm going to go to end mesh and display input mesh. And then I don't want any of these UVs, so working off my input mesh here, I'll choose delete UVs. Okay, now that gives me a history node there, and we will have to get rid of that, but let's just continue here. And now we can go and grab a face from each side here that we want to attach our rear or our side mirror to. Okay, and let's do a quick projection of those UVs. And we'll switch over to wireframe here just so we can line it up and just do a planar projection on both at once. Okay, and I'll just project from the camera view. Okay, project that. And then we'll just look in our UV texture editor, and that's going to be fine. I don't need them to be laid out very well. Uh, they can just sit exactly where they are. Okay, now I'll go back and let's select the body. And now I want to get rid of that history okay, that's sitting on there. So we'll switch back over to N Dynamics, and I'm going to go to N Mesh. Okay, and choose Delete History, but it's going to give me an error here because I'm actually not on my end cloth object. I'm on that input mesh. That's okay, so we're going to switch over to Display Current Mesh, End Mesh, Delete History. Okay, and now that gets rid of that, and now we're back to where we started from, but with our two UV faces mapped out. Now I will select single face and select my transform constraint switch over to the animation module or menu set and choose constrain point on poly okay notice the locator snaps right to that face and we'll do the same thing over here and we still need to add our constraint so i'm just going to select that go back to end dynamics and constraint transform select the face that I want to add that to, shift select my transform constraint, go back to animation, and choose point on poly. Okay, now they are snapped to my surface. Okay, now let's make a few adjustments to the transform constraint itself. I'm going to take its strength and I'm going to crank this up because I don't want any of the points on there to lose their shape. So I want the actual transform constraint to be very strong, except I want that constraint to be able to be broken fairly easily. So I'm going to take that glue strength, and we're going to drop that down. And I'm going to drop that to 0.075. Okay, yes, I have already played with these numbers to get the magic value that I'm looking for. And this one over here took a little bit longer to find that sweet spot, uh, but a value of 0.04 is going to do it uh, for that mirror. All right, I'm going to make sure that we are back at our first frame. And let's just double check my nucleus, make sure it's on. And those sub-steps, that's a little crazy. I'm going to drop that back down just to our uh, the values that we've been using all along there, 6 and 20. Okay, and now we can take a look and see if this works. So I'm just going to go back, make sure I'm at 1 again, and we'll hit play. Okay, so far so good. We've got our side mirrors holding 2 our body. Now we didn't do anything here yet with the drill, so that's just going to sit there. Okay, and so our pieces there are going well. Okay, and we're going to take that back to frame one again. All right, and those are good. And now we're going to make the grill itself. We want to add that into this mix. Okay, we want it to be a breakable object as well, but not like the side mirrors. It's going to actually have to break into smaller pieces. 
Okay, so let's take a break here. Uh, this will wrap up our look at breakaway objects.